I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting, but Skims has changed that. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally tried their bras, and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are too. I've tried so many bras in the past, and the main issue that I have is that they weren't supportive enough, to the point where they felt slouchy. I love my Skims wireless form bra because it's so comfortable and supportive. The older I get, the more I care about actually being comfortable in what I wear every day. And with my wireless form bra, I no longer have to sacrifice my comfort for the support I need. Shop Skims bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes, 30A to 46H. Plus, get free shipping on all orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. Edit audio. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but not in an NPR way. It's more like we're at the bar, having cocktails, getting into your business sort of way. It's it's giving drunk NPR. Oh, and producer Steph is here, too. Hello. Today, we chat, well, the mental game of finances. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here today. I mean, this is like next level excited because, one, we are talking finances, which we all know how much I love to talk about finances. And then two, we have our former expert of the day, now like absolute cemented into the well-adjusting community expert, Asia Evans, with us today. Yes. Yay. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. You are a financial therapist and coach, and your goal, which I love, is to help you feel better about your money. I mean, who could not use that is what I say. Everyone. Right? Everyone. (laughs) So we're recording video today, which is so exciting. How many times do we think I'm going to hit this plant? A hundred? Does it like a drinking game? I'm going yes. 50. All right. 50. <laughs> I was going 30, but now I'm like, I'm lowballing. <laughs> I always look at money like in the most simplest form. Like I compare it to food, right? Calories in, calories out. However, if it were that simple, everyone would be at a weight that is, you know, the weight that they want to be at. And I feel the same way about finances. Like, it is a simple thing. If you spend less than you make, you will have leftover money. If you save money, you will have money in the bank. However, many of us struggle with money, are in debt. So I want to start there and I want to ask you, like, the why of it. Because you are both in the therapy world and a coach and you specialize in finances. Yeah. So I think, and I forgot who said this, I think it was the man who wrote The Simple Path to Wealth. That money is simple, but it's not easy. Ooh. And I think that's where we kind of get hung up as we're trying to navigate what this means. We are also, you know, we live in a very consumer-based place. For sure. Flashing lights. Hey, in your face, you need this. This is going to help you get to that ideal weight. You need this because you want to be this person. Who's your ideal self? What do they dress like? What do they look like? What do they smell like? Let me buy the things for my ideal self, but it doesn't necessarily take care of what's happening on the inside. And that's what we need to kind of shift. So it's inherently emotional, but it's really easy to pretend it's not emotional. That, yeah. hey, if I buy all these things that is the ideal version of myself, I'll feel like that person right away without having to do an internal change or shift. And, you know, people hate change. We hate change. We hate being I don't uncomfortable. Know what you're talking about. <laughs> I embrace change. <laughs> So totally and fully. Not even one bit. (laughs) Well, I love what you said about the the consumerism side of thing, because I think that's something that we haven't talked about a lot. And it's something that I don't often think about. But like, I remember reading someplace where they were saying that that whole thing of like only two left in red letters is absolute horseshit often. Like there is more than two left. But they just want you to feel this sense of urgency. It's almost like the like button. In the Amazon of it all, I just this morning was like, we need a new blanket. And then I was like, I was on. I'm looking at cotton weave blankets. And I was just (laughs) like, and I was almost ordering. And then I remembered that we were trying to budget. And I was like, no, that can wait. And I'm a person who's very aware about money, aware about my spending. Like, if you aren't, it's a setup. It's quick and it's easy. And that is and it arrives a, at your door. Right. Just like and every ad I record for a podcast. It's quick so and easy quick. arrives at your door. <laughs> and that's what it, it is, right? Yeah. When you need something, say your blanket, mm-hmm. and 
<laughs> that sounded so sad. <laughs> Say your blanket. You need that blanket. You know, we I all really do sometimes. Do I really want a weighted blanket. As you were saying, that, that's what I was thinking about. I can get you into your home door tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Quickly Probably before easy. you get home today. Right. If you want it, you can get it immediately. Yeah. That's hard to say no to. It's also a sales tactic to provide a sense of urgency and scarcity that says, hey, if you don't get it, you're not getting it at all. And yes. humans really like immediate gratification. We, we sure want do. to, hey, I bought it. It's coming to me today. Like, that's ridiculous. I don't need anything coming to my door today, but I really like it. I know. <laughs> and I like not having to go to 14 shops. Like, we used to have to, like, get in the car or walk or get on a subway, go here, shop comparison. And now I can comparison shop, like, from my desk in my jammies. Right. And it arrives at the end of the day. And you're disconnected from your money when you're doing it because it's yes. a credit card. So it's not even like you're pulling the money out of your wallet or something to say, okay, there goes my 20, 50, whatever. It's quick and easy. It's already saved in your, like, system. In the checkout, you don't even see the money leaving. You're not even thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, and then you just the bill and you're like, oh, shit. If you check what it. What happened this month? <laughs> Yeah, right. If you check it. Well, we're we're talking about like kind of like the impulse and the the urges behind it, but like what about the emotional connection? Because I think I think it's like, all right, if it were just that simple, you saying that would bring awareness and then people would go, "Oh, let me just think about that." But I often talk about how there's also like a filling a void or I don't feel good about myself today or like generational money trauma. Like Steph and I talk at length about, you know, being poor kids, like the fear that I now have attached to money. Like, I don't know how many people recognize that's a thing. It's everything. It's everything. It's everyone. We've all gone through it. And I think this doesn't come up enough. It does not matter how much money you had sure or doesn't. have. I think because of you know, some of the wealth disparities that we witness in our country, it's really easy to say, oh, well, if poor people did this or if poor people uh -huh. had that, we are budgeting because we're poor. We are budgeting because we need this or people who don't have a lot of money are in debt. We kind of think about finances in a way that it's only one side of the spectrum as if people who have money have no money issues, have no problems, have no emotional baggage around their money. And that is incorrect. Some of the people that I know that have the most fucked up relationship to money come from money right. because in their family, money was used as love, control, and they have the most fucked up relationship to money. Right. Like, that's so common. Yeah. And we don't talk about it because the way we look at money, it's like, oh, if you need to talk about money, then you don't have any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just not And also, the case. it's your fault. Right. Like, what right. did you do wrong that you're right. poor? Like, everything is like, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Like, it starts, some people don't have education around money, but it's not just the education. It's that you may have an entire generational path of fuck the man or this is how we get by or, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, there's totally. historical. And it's also too like, Money is a really great way for people to cope with what's going on. Yeah. So if you are really stressed out like at home. food, like alcohol. Right. Right. It's another vice. And the money allows you access to something else. So if you are stressed out at home, whether it's where your work or your relationship or just parenting or you feel lonely or you don't love yourself right now, your self-esteem is in the trash. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's really easy to just say, you know what, I'm going to go shopping and be amongst the people who don't have other problems and feel like you are now, quote unquote, normal. Yeah. That you can't tell that somebody else is going through very similar things because you're shopping and now you're going to dinner and you're getting drinks with your friends and you feel so good. And then you come home, you look at that statement and you're like, fuck, I'm back at square 30 one. 30 days later. <laughs> right. Like, And right. then it's just a big number and it's not the isolated incident. Right. So it's a it's a really good way to cope with things. So when we start talking about the emotional aspect of money, what I want people to do and what I encourage people to do is start thinking about why am I doing this? What's going on for me that it feels like I need to escape into this other life, into this other feeling and get honest about that because that's what we need to change. It's yeah, yeah we want to change your spending and you know get on track yeah. and be stable. Yes, very important. But that's more number concrete stuff. The things that are going on in people's life, their real lives are not as concrete. It's gosh, I don't know if I want to be in this marriage anymore or I can't afford to move but I can't afford to stay. Like what do I do? Or I want to have a third baby and there's no time, space or money for me to do that. These are really hard issues to reconcile internally, and we don't want to because we don't like change, and it's hard to be that 
introspective. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait. We are recording in literally Times Square. So we're just going to pause for a second for um, sirens. What are the things that people come to see you for? Well, what happens in kind of like a more therapeutic space that I find is people think they're coming for one thing, but they're really coming for something Ain't that always the way it is. (laughs) And so the one thing might be, hey, Asia, I really want to level up with my money. I really want to be doing different things, but I realize there are some challenges or blockers that I face and I want to get to know those and be able to move on from those And those challenges are like, I grew up and I didn't have a lot of money, or I'm still in the scarcity mindset, or I feel like my mindset is fucked up, but I don't really know what that means and what's going on. So that's kind of stage one. And then, you know, we work together. And then what's really going on is, oh, me leveling up into this different financial stratosphere makes me feel like I'm leaving my community. It makes me feel like I'm leaving my family, my friends behind. It makes me feel like I don't quite fit in with these other people, but my people, it doesn't quite fit the same way anymore. Mm -hmm. And I am uncomfortable. Who am I if I can't go back to my roots? Yeah. So it starts off as one way and you get a little deeper and it's usually something else. I come to you, right? And I'm like, I am in $35,000 of credit card debt and I hate this and I don't know what to do. Where do you start? So usually I don't start with the money stuff. I do want to know kind of like what's going on. Yeah. So if it's 35,000. How do we 000, get here? Right. Yeah. What? Why? Why now? Yeah. <laughs> why now? Very therapeutic. Because if, if it was just like, you know, there was a health issue and it blew up, then they wouldn't right. need to see you. You just have to like tackle it. Right. And why now is also this is irritating you enough that you need to do something about it. Like that's right. how you feel. And I like my clients to be at that level of motivation for change. Yeah. Because if you're not, it's really easy to, you know, willy nilly your way into like, yeah, I want to change, but I'm not quite ready, but I'm not quite sure. And that is a personal preference as for me as Asia, as a therapist, other yeah. therapists are okay getting people to that point, but I am a little more action oriented. Ooh, I love <laughs> this. <laughs> So if you came to my office, you're like, this is what I'm in my credit card debt. I actually am not even talking about the numbers. I'm like, okay, let's talk about how you grew up. So yes. what was what was money like for you? How was it talked about? Like literally start from your first money memory and let's go through your life and just tell me about it. And they're like, well, uh, mm, I want to. I don't want to talk about my parents. I'm like, yeah. Nobody ever wants to bash them. And I understand because there is a lot of, especially in communities of color, there's a lot of respect and Mm. reverency towards some of the sacrifices or just effort. And I'm a parent, so it is a sacrifice um, often. I love them and I'm willing to do it, but it's still a sacrifice. Isn't that you feel like you have to say that after? Yes. Every fucking time. You can never just be like, it's so hard. I love them. It's like, it's just (laughs) fucking hard. hard. (laughs) Okay. Because of that, as an adult, you're like, I can't say anything bad about them. They did their Mm -hmm. best. They did all that they could do. And that may be the case. And it is true for many, many people. But Sometimes that has an impact. Sometimes does that mean you got didn't get handed a bag? Right. You know, it, it just doesn't... means that you needed something else. It just means that they weren't able to meet you specifically where you needed them to meet you. Yeah. It doesn't mean they didn't love you or sacrifice for you or do all the things. It just means that you needed something a little bit different that yeah. wasn't provided for you. And it is at no malicious intent from anybody. And I think that's really hard for people to just label the feeling. Yeah. I'm like, this is not about your parents. I just want to hear how you felt about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, so you can discover when you're in that space of I'm about to click the blanket. Right, right. So it could be what you saw happening with the other adults around you, whether it was your guardians, your parents, whoever, how did they handle being upset? There are some people who know, oh, when my mom was upset or when anything was going on that was a little stressful, we went shopping. Right away, they yeah. know. Yes. And I'm like, mm. okay, well, that coping skill may now be your coping skill, but why are you shopping? Like, yeah. what's going on? So what we're trying to do for me and my clients is just understand where the patterns are coming from and where they started. So that's getting things, you know, moving a little bit to figure out what is at the root. Yeah. And then we can figure out, oh, well, that connects to what I'm doing now in this way. I think every single episode we've had about finances – The people come in thinking that we're going to just create a budget for them. And every time I'm like, you know, we're like the person sitting in a car and talking about how their parents are opening credit card in their name. And we're like, 
you know, like we're just like our fate, like mouth job. You know, there's no way we can even talk about budgeting. And what's so amazing is like Steph is actually working with a past guest, like helping them set up a budget and stuff. Cause we just like, we couldn't even get to it because it was like, girl, your parents did this to you. And we have to, you were actually our expert in that episode. I remember. Do you find that people get that pretty quickly or you have to really do a lot of work to have them see the patterns? Some people are ready and I have found that some clients who are doing their own kind of developmental work, like personal development, Mm -hmm. if they have been in therapy before or if they're in therapy at the same time, which I really like, I have clients that I started seeing before I niched down into financial therapy where I am their more like generalist therapist. But now I'm like, well, we're definitely talking about your money. (laughs) (laughs) I can't leave that alone. Like, no. So they know now. Um, And these are people I've worked with for a long time. So if somebody's been doing some of the work, if you will, on themselves to kind of explore, it can happen pretty quickly. Yeah. If this is the first time that you're doing this, we might be going through some stuff. It's going to be a little messy. Mm -hmm. You got to go through it to go through it. I keep thinking like sometimes you talk about something and you just goes in the back of the person's head and then there'll be a click later. You know, it's like when I started working with our very first um, episode, Aileen, and it ain't too Mm -hmm. late to fix your finances. Like she called me up and said, I just, I want some help with a budget. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I got my spreadsheet out. And then we had like five minutes of a call and I was like, girl, we have to actually block off some more time here. I was like, "You, you do realize that you make the same amount of money I do and you're on, I don't know how many mortgages on your house. Like, let's, right. like, we have to, we're going to have to talk about the connection. And we sat for like, it was probably like three or four times that we just sat and talked, yeah. including coming on the podcast. Mm. Then from there, she went and got real help. It's like, it takes a minute for some people to see the patterns. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like, these are often like lifelong patterns. Exactly. And that's what you're trying to change. That cannot change in 45 minutes. No. Right? You can set up a beautiful budget. No matter but- how good producer stuff is. <laughs> No, I mean, it's funny that you brought up that example, because when I started making that budget, Mm -hmm. I mean, I am, I think Robin and I both have this toxic trait where I'm like, I'm going to fix the thing now. We we can fix it for you. There's a problem. I'll fix it. Like, I will find the answer. I won't be able to sleep until I fix it for you. Yeah, like, I have to fix it now. And like, that is not a realistic or healthy. But so I'm like, I'm making this budget. And part of that is for me. I'm like, I need to help this person. I need to make this budget, you know? But like she was not ready for the budget when I made the budget and I could give it to her and be like, well, why why aren't you filling it out? But like she had all of this work to do and it's still doing it. And the budget is helpful because it's there. It's meant to be there forever. Like, yeah, the budget was for like 10 years. It was like a 10 year plan. It wasn't like a 30 day get out of debt free. (laughs) Like the problem is like going to take many, many years. And that's even just the spreadsheet. Like then there's all this stuff happening underneath that. Right. And it's also... She has to be aware that she wants to change. And what happens is that even though we know it is emotional and it is also about the numbers, we want the numbers win quicker Mm -hmm. than we want the emotional change. People think that the hardest part is going to, let's get to the root. What are my patterns? And then we figure them out and you're like, okay, I'm I'm cured. I'm fixed. (laughs) I'm like, well, funny story. Now it's like the hard part because Mm -hmm. now you know what's going on. Mm. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to change your behavior when some of these things start coming up. So you as a person want to go back to everything that you've been doing the last, you know, 20, 30 X years, whatever it might be. But now I'm telling you, and you are telling you that you have to do something different. And that is what's really hard. That's why change is so hard because when you are stressed out, when you're going through a lot, when there's a lot on your mind, it's easy to fall back into the normal kind of everyday systems that we have and just do it without thinking about it. It's a habit. Yeah. Versus saying, oh, the new me needs to do this. The new me is keeping this nice budget that was made for me. The new me has to do it this way. And that is different. And I don't like it. And it's uncomfortable. Well, and and that's the cycle of it, right? Is that you are asking yourself to do a hard thing. And when do you do these patterns when you're in hard moments? Right. I think people aren't prepared for after the after you see the light. Right. And it's so you're so uncomfortable with the debt that you want it to be gone immediately. Mm-hmm. And you think that now that you have this new plan, that it can be gone just as quick. And that is discouraging when it takes a lot of time. Like I think people hear the number, and I'll stick with the thirty five thousand, thinking about what your salary looks like. Can you afford to just give $35,000 no. to something else in a year? If you could, you wouldn't. Well, that's not true. It is. but I it mean, isn't. you might get into yeah. debt still, but I think that's what people want. 
They don't think about it as like, oh, what's my salary? Okay, I pay taxes or I'm paying these other things. Do I have $35,000 to give to my debt to be debt free in a year? And, you know, sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. And I don't think people look at it as that money has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to, oh, well, why can't I pay this off in a year? I'm like, well, you know, 35 divided by 12. Yeah. Do you have that much money a month to give to your debt? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. It's fine if you're like, okay, well, I'm going to get my bonus. But what I'm looking for oh, that is bonus, like. <laughs> that bonus thing is always the worst. I'm going to clear it all up when I get the bonus. Okay, great. I hope the bonus is as big. And are you going to stop doing this? Yeah. Like this is really stressing you out. If you kind of just get out of it because of the bonus, that's great. I love that for you. But. But then you, don't do it again. Exactly. And that's yeah. what happens. And the same thing happens when people, you know, try to take care of their credit card debt with a loan. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I don't know if I trust myself. I'm like, if you're even questioning it, don't, don't. do it. Yeah. Don't do it. It, it. You can only do that when you are already like at a more healed place. Right. I don't think people understand how hard it is to overcome certain systems, right? So yes, we have the societal systems that we all live within. That's very difficult. But then the difficulty of just... I really want to go to brunch with my friends. Oh, I know. And and saying no when you have to say no or saying yes when you can say yes. But I think we really underestimate how emotionally connected to money we are and what happens to us. We just want to pretend it's not that big of a deal. Let's spend it and it'll be okay. Yeah. And it's just not. I look at like my daughter who's a little bit of a spender. Mm -hmm. She's a little like avocado toasty. And I'm like, I'm like, girl, <laughs> so you don't good. have av avocado toast money. I'll be like, brokey. I'll be like, you do not have that money. And then she'll be like, stop calling me brokey. I'm like, well, let's look at your green light app. Mm -hmm. You don't have the money. Like it's coming in. You're spending it. And then I'm like, you got to take your foot off the gas, Robin, because like you don't want to like make it. I don't want to make it like horrible for her that she's like got trauma. I think what happens with parents specifically is that when we have children, there's a level of us almost trying to like reparent ourselves through our kids. <laughs> what are you talking about, Asia? Uh-huh. Yep. I'm like you said, we're going to go all. there. Um, so when I was three. <laughs> you know, and we don't realize that our kids may need something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really difficult because you're like, yeah, but I wish I had this. So I'm going to make sure you have all these things. And that's great. But your kid may need something else yeah. in a different way. So to have the access of like, yeah, you can go to Chipotle, but it should not be unlimited because then yeah. it it's still far enough away that they do not understand that this is coming from someplace. And then, you know, they're 18 or they go to college or they get a job or they move out or whatever happens. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I need to manage money. And it has felt unlimited before. Exactly. And that sets kids up for, you know, not feeling confident in how to manage money or getting into debt because they haven't been told no. Yeah. And I say that very respectfully to everybody's parenting. You have to decide where your boundaries are as a parent and financially. I do not want my kids unfeathered access to my credit card. That sounds wild to me. For what? Can you imagine? Like, what do you need to have that you need what am my tens of thousands of credit card? <laughs> like, uh, you know, like what? That's exactly. You know, as an adult, you have time and you built up credit and your credit limit may be $10,000, $15,000. You want your kid to have complete and utter access to that all the time? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, no, I do not. I don't. And that, that's great if somebody else does. I love that for them. But make sure that you understand what the consequences might be when your kids have that unchecked access without... Um, having a conversation about it and maybe some personal finance education around it and I mean emotions. yeah I'm like relating this I don't have kids so I'm like relating this to myself I'm like I don't even know if I want if I want myself to have that access exactly you know like what's the checkpoint like for a kid the checkpoint is probably a conversation with your parents or asking permission or a green light on an app or whatever it is or a budgeted number for the month a number for the week a mm -hmm. number for the month like there is that checkpoint I mean it's harder to parent that but for the kid I think it's there is a checkpoint yeah for us if we're doing it for ourselves like we have to build that in yeah yeah and I feel like it's almost even harder to understand what that should be like yeah. what is my checkpoint but I do think there's also a problem with some people don't have like access to certain conversations 
like this one mm-hmm. even. Yeah. Do you feel like a portion of your work is like almost like opening up conversations for yeah. certain communities? Because when you say communities, like I'm like, oh, yeah, I have certain people that I would talk about debt with, but I would never talk about debt with these people. Right. Yeah. But I talk about savings with these people and not with the, you know, and there's like guilt tied around it and privilege and shame, shame and, and, yeah. and all of these things. Um, but realistically, if we all could like get on like a global Zoom and like talk about our money shit, like it Whoa. would be probably really long but maybe great you know (laughs) I think it would be awesome and I think a lot of um people wouldn't like that Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. because what the consequence of Mm -hmm. those types of conversations you know you have to do something about it and or it's harder to ignore yeah and also your perspective changes and a lot of people are making a lot of money from lack of perspective I think Mm. is the best way to put it so I I definitely think a my clients may not always know that they need the place to talk about money, mm-hmm. but they do. And to be honest with you, this me niching down into this topic came because I needed a place to talk about mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, who can I find that understands what it is? And I think I talk about New York a lot, but we live in a very particular place that is not as common as the country, right? Like mm-hmm. New York is a very particular cosm of people and diversity and economic growth and money like yeah it is There's not a lot of money in the city right there, it's not normal to see somebody who literally is homeless yeah. in front of a billionaire's house yeah does that make sense like yeah. when you are thinking about that no you know we talk about keeping up with the joneses who are the joneses of new york <laughs> like what like wall street it, it, it's just infinite. And it's not even just in New York. It's people who live in other countries but have places here who are just yeah. every day walking around and you see them, millionaires, walking around. That's not a very normal experience for the country. So yeah, I think that particularly when we talk about living in this type of place, it is all the time that you're like, oh, well, I will work out if I get that Stanley Cup. And look at that cute workout set. Is she going to that $45 class? I want to go to that $45 class. Maybe I will look like that. Maybe I will feel like that. It's just constant. And that's why it is so important to get in touch with how we feel emotionally Mm -hmm. about money. Um, So, yeah, sometimes I am the conduit, long story short, of those conversations. Well, what's so interesting is like the conduit both ways, right? Because for people that have less money, it's a conduit that you're providing access to conversations to just be like, you know, like, like I have friends that think $65,000 a year is like a lot of money, the one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it is in yeah, a lot of other in a places. lot of places. It is, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I have you know some friends who are like, I make, I don't know, two hundred and fifty grand a year, and that's not enough. And I think it's very rare that those people have access to the same conversations. Right. Yeah, and depending on which one you're closer to, I think y- you understand that side more, right? Yep. And so I think for you, it's like you're in this really interesting position where you get to see both sides and right. almost be like a a vessel to like make the middle ground or something. Yeah. And I mean, there's similar conversations. Like it doesn't matter if your net worth is in the millions or if your net worth is negative. Like there are similar conversations. They just come out differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all trying to figure out like, oh, well, what does it mean for me to show up and have money? What does it mean for me to show up and not have money? It's all, all a lot of feelings. Like that's the best way I can encapsulate all the things that are going on. Well, okay. So you, you are in debt. And you suspect something might be wrong. Where do you start? If somebody's like, I'm in debt, I don't know what to do. I would probably first say we need to make sure that you understand money. Mm -hmm. So let's do the personal finance education piece. So understand how you can get out of debt. Understand what your budget may need to be. So let's get you on some kind of system or plan, however we Mm want to call it. First, now that you're working that system and plan, you're going to have a lot of feelings that come up. Now let's talk about those feelings. Now it could be through a journal. Are you journaling your feelings about money? Are you talking to people about feelings about money? Are you just having some kind of outlet about what is going on for you financially that is not just you sitting in your head ruminating about what's <laughs> no going happens on? No good happens with that. No, no good. No, because what happens is people get stressed out. They don't know what to do. And then they, you know, change their plan or do something a little drastic. And yeah. I don't want that for people. Yeah. So start getting really honest. And it is, sometimes it is brutal. It doesn't need to be. But sometimes it is just you have to sit down and have some tears and, mm-hmm. and just be honest about what's coming up. 
And I've had to go through that too. When I first moved to New York, I was like, I'm making so much money. And I was making 60,000. And to <laughs> me, that was a ton yes, of money. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it is a ton of money when you don't live in a major city. When 50% of your salary doesn't go to rent. Correct. It was a lot of money. And if I lived home, then I would have been rolling in the dough. Yeah. But I didn't. I lived in New York and it was very expensive and I had to figure that out. And there were times when I was crying and I was upset and I didn't feel as worthy as some other of my other friends who could afford to, you know, go to brunch, go shopping and then go to dinner and then go get drinks and go home because it's Saturday. I'm like, what in the world? Like, that's my like, that's (laughs) That's a car payment. You're spending money for the week, right? For the month. All of my spending money, like car payment, like everything, right? Half a rent, like what? No way. So Have the moment to just get honest with yourself. And you don't even have to go to the patterns yet. You don't even have to get to, hey, what's my root cause? That takes some time. But start listening to podcasts. I think there are some podcasts that are really, really amazing that help people get to some of those places. And, you know, there are a lot of free help out there. Right. And there's a lot of communities and debtors anonymous and things like that. There's tons of different like free options, I think. Right. So. It takes time, but, you know, you can do anything on the internet now. Like, internet has everything. Be cautious of where you're getting your information. Yes. Triple check it. It's so funny because I want to, like, wrap this into a bow and be like, so what's the number one, you know? know. Which is, like, the problem that we're all talking about. Exactly. Like, it sounds like the tool that you're saying is really just to, like, slow down and... And and look into it and get help and build a community and... Yep. Learn your feelings. And Love that. That works so well for my brain. Right? <laughs> so easy for everybody to do. And oh, that's, we all just were like this. <sighs> right? And circle back to the beginning. That's why it is simple but not easy. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. Brilliant. Well, here's what I would like to say. We have your brilliance here. And so we're going to do a little game that we are calling Would You Rather? And that is not dirty. Get your mind <laughs> yeah, out of the gutter. Like, um. <laughs> Okay, so I have different situationals. Wait, um, do we have to answer stuff if we're talking ground rules here? Because you know how competitive <laughs> happens, I like, get. How do I win? I know. I like no, but I'm saying for ground rules, do we have to answer by like our first instinct or the therapized version of what we know we're supposed to doing? I want the honest version of what you would do. Like this is happening okay. today. What are okay. you doing? Okay, today, right now, right in this now. moment. Okay, okay, so, okay. I'm so nervous because it's a game. Yes. Situation number one, you're going out to dinner, but you're feeling a little tight with money. Do you buy all of your friends meals? Fuck it. Like you want to be the generous friend or do you own up that you can barely afford your own share? So this depends on who I'm out with. If I'm out with someone who has done a lot for me, I'm probably going to I'm going to buy the thing for them. And then I'll on the back end, I'll sort it. But if it's just like my friends, I'll be like, guys, like it's hard living. Let's let's can we eat at Chipotle and then like make drinks at my house? Oh, I'm I'm absolutely fuck it. And you are. Yeah. If I'm with like my close friends, I'm for sure. I'm all like even if it's just your friends, when shouldn't you? We're like not even letting Asia get in her. I'm like, like, what? This is it. Let's let this happen. (laughs) I'm like, like, it's your friends. They know you. But if we're already, like, we're talking about going out for dinner. Okay. This is why money is hard. I mean, if, okay, it (laughs) really depends. Today, I think I'm stressed about money, but it's not forefront of my mind today. And I'm in, like, New York, New York proper city instead of Brooklyn. I'm probably going out for dinner. And I'm probably not even just paying for myself. I'm probably like, oh, this is so fun. And I'm paying for it and then I'm freaking out about it for the rest of the week I'm like making all my meals and they're like rice and lentils and whatever and I don't know what that is but I am also I'm the, like Asia can you, can you ask her can you ask her why she like, feels shots. like she needs to do that you know I am rounds that person, I'm shots. rounds do you, I am you just want to just you just like love everyone and you want to give it away or like what is that I think I just want to have a good time and then I'm like I know that I can get myself out of it later so I'm just gonna Figure it out later. Oh, we're going to talk about this over lunch, girl. <laughs> Who's buying? Now that we're, I'm buying because you've done yeah, a lot for me. Like, Robin is definitely. I'm oh, seriously I'm, not letting I'm you. Wrong. By the way, Fine. talk about all of our money trauma. I'm not letting you because now I'm so panicked about your finances, but I'm also paying because I know you've done a lot for me. It's, so this is like trauma much. on so trauma you guys on trauma. Are just like rubbing we're each other's like yeah. back we're both and like, forth like soft spots. Negative yeah. one points to both of us. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. But I love that you both want to save each other and be there for each do other. You? But I do love do it. You? I I'm a friend's friend, so I get it. But um, 
communicating with your friends is the best option to say that you're having a hard time. And you don't even have to say you're having a hard time. Just be like, hey, I want to have a good time. I want to see you guys. But let's go to Chipotle and then make drinks somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Or like cook at my house or whatever. I think that especially when friends are at different levels, it's really good to just be like, yo, can we just like not do five star? Mm. I have one friend who's just like always wants a really expensive steak. I'm always like, girl, I'm freelance. Mm -hmm. Let's bring it down a notch. Um, your friend gives you $100 for your birthday and says they want you to spend it on something nice for yourself. Do you put it aside and save it or do you actually spend it on something fun? I put $50 aside and then I spend $50 on myself. Except for I would have guilt because my friend gave me this money. Like if a parent or a relative or somebody gave me the money, then I feel like I'd do 50-50. If it was a friend, I think I'd feel bad saving a portion of it because like they didn't try to give me money to go into my retirement fund. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This just happened to me and I put the money away and I lied. (gasps) Um, I like that you're calling yourself out. It wasn't for my birthday. It was like a New Year's gift or whatever. They were like, I didn't know what to get you and I wanted to get you something because they had gotten like a bonus or whatever. It's kind. And I put it aside and I was like, I'm going to spend it on something nice. But then I didn't. Like, okay, I but, just so, put yeah, it but in I my savings. This. But this is like, she, this made her care for herself more. That's okay, I right? I agree. I think that's totally fine. Oh, cool. Be, so Great. I think there's a difference, <laughs> I win. though, right? In, Wait a minute. I, think I put there's... $50 in savings, too. I think the difference is, and this actually goes to your point, is that if your money, if it was like a birthday gift, like this person is saying, hey, I want you to actually spend the money on yourself. Yeah. I would prefer if you didn't save that money and actually yeah. spent that money on yourself. However, your gift that you're talking about is, hey, here's a New Year's gift. It, it's like the holiday or the date money I wanted matter. to share it with right, you. I mm-hmm. want to share it with you. So you putting that away is just like, yeah, could I buy something with this for myself? Of course, but I'm deciding to invest in myself. <laughs> I'm doing this for future me. I'm laughing because the but is, but did I buy rounds of drinks for everyone last yeah. night? Yes. And am I panicked about that? Yes. Will this make me feel better? Yes. Yep. So... But we need to break the cycle first. Yes. All right. So see you later for that. (laughs) Um, Okay. Next situation. Your taxes are due in a week. Are you going to pay an expert to do them? You do not need an extra thing on your plate this week. Or are you setting aside your Saturday, making a pot of coffee, making a spreadsheet, and working it out on your damn self? Oh, I'm 100% paying an expert. Mostly because they're going to get me more money back. We do, we do well on our taxes. Like, I know enough to be dangerous. Not we do well on our taxes. We do. I got a, I got a Republican <laughs> accountant who's source. like, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I, I pay an expert, though my taxes are absurdly complicated. Yeah. So I don't know if that's like a accurate depiction of who I am. I feel like both of us as people are Saturday morning wasting time. But mm. Well, I mean, I'm certainly going to spreadsheet going into the accountant hmm. and I'm going to do all that. But that has to be done. So many caveats. I would well, normally we don't say, answer a question simply. I was like, I would normally say that the person should spend their Saturday doing their taxes, but the difference is that you're talking about is that it's complicated and yeah. there's a lot going on. And I feel the same way. I also pay <laughs> pay somebody to do my taxes. I'm like, whoa, too many things, business, all this other stuff. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, I think as soon as so you and it. it's funny because that was one of the things for why we wanted to do this episode is it's around tax season now, right. and it's like there's certain things is like it gets beyond what your knowledge is. Yeah, get, get help. Like I don't understand taxes it's so nearly as much as I would like to yeah. understand them. For me, it's growth to be like, I'm letting go mm-hmm. and I am trusting that this man can help me with my finances because, sure, I could learn it. Is that a good ROI on my time? No. No, mm. it is not. And if you wanted to, great. But yeah. if you're not really too jazzed that's about true. it, That's like, true. I'll do my mom's taxes, but I'm not doing my taxes. Well, that's because yeah. you're a helper. Yes. See? Also because her taxes are incredibly easy. Um <laughs> Okay, last one. Wait, hold on. Before we ask the last one, I'm winning, right, Asia? I'm not keeping count. Um, Your car just broke down, eek, and a credit card just arrived in the post. Mm. Are you using the credit card for a quick fix, or are you dealing with the pain of not having a car for a month and slowly paying it off? I'm going to say for three months and slowly paying it off. Well, I mean, for that, it depends. Do I need the car? Like, if it's a necessity, then I'm going to... Personally, like I'm going to use the card and then I'm going to budget during those three months so that I can pay it off. If it's a luxury, the car, well, then it's going to sit for the three months until I can save the money. 
I do feel like this is harder for me to answer because I've never had a car. I think if I'm like extending this, I'm not putting anything on my credit card that's a big expense ever. Like even if it was a necessity, I don't think. I mean, yeah. even if like, let's say the credit card payment was 20 bucks a month and and then I don't know how to do math, but over time that mm-hmm. was, let's say mm-hmm. it was $100, okay? If I had to put it on the credit card, even though I knew I would pay it off in five weeks, I still wouldn't put it on the credit card. Because even, the, even if I had the money yeah. in savings. Or oh, just because it would make you like I anxious. Can't, yeah. I mean, I would right. I have like multiple backup savings. Like so I would take it out of that and then I would put in my financial notes for the month how much needed to be paid off and how quickly, and then I would cut my It sounds like neither one of you are taking on debt. No. But what's healthier? Me. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Asia. Or what's the healthy thing to do in that situation? I mean, to me, it sounds like, and that wasn't an option, but we're going to enter it in as an option if you have the savings to be able to pay for the car mm-hmm. and then put that back. That is the healthier option. And I think I want to be careful between healthy and like necessity yeah. because sometimes necessity is not the best financial decision. Sure. Sometimes necessity isn't the healthiest decision. But like if this is what you take to get to work every single day and if you can't work, then what happens? It depends. Well, it's Which just, is like a true therapist answer. Yeah. I'm like, it I depends. love that. But that's but the, the whole, truth. That's, mm-hmm. And this is such a nice place for us to leave, right? Is it's The whole thing is situational. The whole thing is about your relationship to money. In answering that question, that's the one question where I'm at my healthiest. Mm-hmm. Like I know how much I need to have in savings. That's a smart number to have for emergencies. That's what it's there for. I'm pulling it out and then I'm putting it back and I'm budgeting and I'm not doing it from a place of fear. Mm-hmm. So it's like it is all situational. But my answer to three of the other questions was coming from a place of fear. So it's like catching yourself. Like we talk all the time about the rubber band, like if you're mm-hmm. quitting smoking, like catching yourself, snapping the rubber band and being like, I'm in that place. What can I do to come out of that place? And then what's the smart decision that Asia has helped me come up with? Yeah. I mean, also a lot of the other situations involve somebody else. And yes. as two helpers, mm-hmm. that is going to rub up against other Isn't things. that interesting? I love that we're ending on that and you just hit the plant for the third time. So. I know. And yeah. only three times. I yeah. thought it'd be a thousand. <laughs> yeah. well, I said 50. <laughs> I, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say thank you for coming. And I do want to say, if you want more Asia Evans, which who would not? Um, she is Asia E. Evans on Instagram. It's A-J-A-E. Therapy. Evans. Oh, therapy. I'm sorry. Asia E. Therapy on Instagram. Um, is there any place else that people can catch you or if they want to reach out to you? Yeah. Instagram is always good. Um, my website, you can feel free to contact me there, which is asiaevanscounseling.com. And yeah, I'm around. LinkedIn, all the things. I'm around. I'm available. And and thank you. I mean, like, yeah. I don't know. Go save some money, everybody. Yeah. And feel good. good about it. Oh, oh that's a better, that's a better that's one. a nice ending. <laughs> all right. Good job. I won. She took over. The- <laughs> what? <laughs> For more Robin, and you may need that. You probably don't need it. But like, if you do, you can follow me at Real Rob Hops on all the platforms, all the socials, as the kids today say. Well Adjusting is an edit audio original series. It's exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Our producer and editor is Maria Passingham, and our production manager is Kathleen Speckert. Thank you to the entire edit audio team and to you for listening. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it.